Okay, we're here on realagriculture.com for the canola school talking to Matt Stanford from the canola council. Matt, we're talking about sclerotinia. Yeah, you bet. Um, lots of questions about whether or not the farmer should spray for disease and um, dry land, southern Alberta, southern Saskatchewan, um, most of the time I would probably tell them not to. Um, under irrigation though, especially once you start getting east of Lethbridge where there's lots of other host crops like beans, uh, sunflowers can be grown, uh, then the incidence of sclerotinia does go up dramatically. So if you're looking at spraying for sclerotinia, you're going to want to make sure that you're hitting it at the right stage. If you wait too long and, it, and you hit the crop with the fungicide too late, you're essentially wasting your money is what it boils down to. Um, the staging for spraying for sclerotinia uh, is the uh, it's registered at 30 to 50 percent bloom. Um, what we've found over the past few years and the chem companies as well is that the earlier side of that window is where you want to be when you're spraying. So uh, even in that 20 percent bloom stage, but 20 to 30 percent uh, bloom stage. If you can hit it in that range, um, that's you want. The idea is you want to hit the maximum amount of flower petals that are open before any start to fall, because typically those very first ones that fall are going to be causing the most damage because they have the potential to fall off of the main stem down onto where you know the main stem can be damaged. The spores from sclerotinia. The mushrooms are apothecia. The spores, they actually land on the flower petals. And so once those petals start to drop, if you haven't sprayed it with a fungicide, those petals drop down and then they land down on the leaves. And you know, what the major problem is, is if they land right down in here where you've got a new branch starting to form, I guess right there is a prime example. You've got that petal right there on this one of your nice secondary branches. And that infection, if, it, if this petal does happen to be infected with sclerotinia, it'll not only choke off this branch, but it'll also choke off your main stem. And what you'll start to see in a few days, if you peel this petal off there, and you start to got a grayish, a grayish lesion starting on the plant, you've got sclerotinia setting in. And so you want to just hit the maximum amount of petals before there's any drop. 20% um, bloom stage, there's about 15 flowers open on the plant and 30% bloom stage, there is about 20 flowers open on the plant. So, so what, what kind of yield loss can be caused by sclerotinia? Well, it, in severe infestations in Manitoba, they get well over 25% sometimes. Um, it really does depend though, and there's a lot of factors that come into play, like under irrigation, uh, you know, if you're shooting for those 60, 70, 80 bushel yields, it's almost a no-brainer. Um, you've got that really thick canopy that holds the moisture in. And one way, I guess, is good to gauge it. Like under irrigation, it's going to be wet in there all the time. But on dry land crops, if you're walking through the crop at noon and it's really thick to walk through um, and you're getting wet still at noon, you've got you've got good conditions for sclerotinia. Um, you know, 25 degrees Celsius outside is about prime for sclerotinia development, but even if it's 30 degrees outside, you've got all that moisture in the canopy, it's probably a few degrees cooler down in there, so, you know, you've got prime conditions in that canopy, potentially. Um, so, either by air or by ground rig, is a good way to get your fungicide on but making sure you're using the most water volume that you can because you want to get good coverage of all of those open flowers that's the main thing so is this specific plot at about the end of the window yeah what we're seeing here is you've got a lot of these flowers that have already dropped off and these pods are starting to form once you start seeing um, the very first flowers falling off you want to be getting in there and spraying it by then um, once you start seeing pods with no flowers on it and you've got a lot of petal drop already happening you've missed the window uh, you want to be hitting it prior to this stage for sure um, 
Yeah, the field's just nicely getting a bright yellow color on it. Um, when there's still a greenish tinge to it, when it's just starting to go into flower, uh, that's a little on the early side, but once you start getting a nice bright yellow, you want to probably be spraying it. But you've got to get in there and do an evaluation. You can get cards from different companies that you can hold up and look at the field as a whole to try to gauge it compared to different bloom stages of pictures that they've taken in the past or actually get out there and pull a bunch of plants out and count how many flowers are open. And if you do have the odd flower that's already fallen off, you have to count that uh, newly formed pod with the flower dropped off, you've got to count that in the number of flowers that are open when you're doing that count. Okay, thanks a lot, Matt. You bet.